Hello, good morning. Thank you for participating in Moorhead at Home Skywatching, hosted by Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center. My name is Amy Sale. I'm an educator at Moorhead. We are a unit of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, located on campus. We also work throughout the state through a number of outreach initiatives like our mobile lab vans, summer camp programs, and the annual North Carolina Science Festival. Our mission is to help people better understand science, technology, and health, and we do this through engaging learning opportunities like this live virtual event. We are glad to have you here today for our program, The Sky is a Compass, and my colleague Nick will get us started. Hey everybody, thanks Amy. Uh, my name is Nick Eeks and I'm an educator at Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center and we're excited to be with you today for Moorhead at Home Skywatching. So as Amy mentioned, we are going to learn all about how the sky is a compass. Um, this might be something that seems a little bit unfamiliar to you, but hopefully after today you'll have the tools you need to be able to kind of tell your directions uh, when you're out there stargazing. So uh, just as a heads up to everybody, the program we're going to be using today to simulate our sky. It's kind of like a flat screen planetarium. It's called Stellarium. And we just put the link uh, so that you can access that software um, yourself if you're interested, maybe after the session today or at another time. It's free to download and it's a really fun way to fly around the sky. Um, also, we want to hear from you. We want your questions. So if there's anything you're curious about during the session, please use the Q&A box right at the bottom of the screen there. You can type in your questions and we will try our best to get to those um, as, as we move forward. So with all of that out of the way, I think we're ready to start looking at the sky. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and we should be seeing a kind of interesting looking daytime sky, but I am gonna change one thing about it because when you walk outside, um, it's very likely you don't have this same view um, because we've kind of distorted it a little bit so that we can see more of the sky. Um, you'll notice, and we'll talk a lot about these in a moment, that you see big red letters around you. We will keep those up there um, because they're gonna be very useful to us. You might also notice at the bottom of the screen, there's uh, some information about the time and date that's also really useful to track where we are. Um, so right now it says we're in 2020, June 30th, a little after 10 a.m. and we are on Earth and viewing from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So I know some of you watching might not be right in Chapel Hill and that is okay. Um, this is a pretty good sky for anywhere in the southeastern United States. Uh, if you happen to be somewhere else, um, you might want to ask us a question or something like that about how your sky would change. But what I want to do for us to begin is actually change our view a little bit because realistically, we don't see this whole big view of the sky just with our eyes from one viewpoint. Our view, if we're standing out in a field, probably looks a little more like this. I don't know what you think, Amy. This, does this seem a little more realistic for if you were standing outside? It does. Yep, I can imagine seeing this, except I don't think I'd see any red letters. I was standing outside. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know uh, about you, but I, I don't really notice very much in the sky. If, if we make it a little bit later, something starts to glow and appear uh, ever so slightly in the top of your screen. You can see the glow from the sun. Now I'm actually going to move us out one little notch there so we can see it a little bit better. Um, you can see the sun up there in the sky. So if I move time forward here, which in the real world, we have to wait every second uh, to, to have, have, have time move forward. And realistically, what's actually moving is our Earth. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, it's going to look a lot like that sun is moving across the sky. So we're zooming forward. We're past noon now. It's lunchtime. Wow, that's pretty dramatic, Nick. It I've is, never yeah. seen the sun move quite that fast. You wouldn't in, in the real world, but when you use a, a program like this, you can kind of speed it up. So I'll actually pause us there at about um, 4 p.m., maybe a, a little bit later. So we can catch something oh, else rising. Look at what we just got on the left-hand side of your screen, rising more or less in the east. I see the moon. Yeah. So we have a question for y'all. This is, you know, a very brief introduction to the motions you see in the sky. Um, and, you know, I kind of gave this away. I'm pretty guilty of doing that a lot of the time. Um, but give, give us your best guess here for why the sun appears to move across the sky. We'll give you a couple of options. The options are because Earth spins 
or because the sun is a really fast star. And Amy made a good observation that the sun really looked like it was moving fast across the sky. We want to see what you think. Yeah, so why does the sun look like it's moving across the sky during the day? So give you all a few seconds to think about that. Some of you are watching with other people so you can come to a consensus and vote either the sun appears to move across the sky. Is it because Earth spins or is it because the sun is a really fast star? Okay. okay. Oh, wow, Nick, everybody agreed. Good job. That was a fair amount of votes too. So looks like everybody was listening to you, Nick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's because Earth spins. We live on a spinning planet. So, um, so everybody think right now, have you ever been on a merry-go-round, like in a playground? Have you ever been on a merry-go-round and you're spinning and spinning and spinning? And even though you were the one spinning, if you kept your eyes open and looked at the rest of the playground, what do you think you'd see, Nick? Um, I think it would look like things are moving. I think it would look like the playground was spinning around us. Well, um, this is kind of what's going on. We live on a spinning planet, Earth, and so as we spin, the things in the sky appear to spin around us. So you can actually try this at home right now. If you are able, uh, watch for any cords or any obstacles around you. You can try standing up in front of whatever device you're watching right now. Stand up and turn around. And uh, as you do so, I recommend you do it slowly, spin around on the spot slowly and pay attention to what happens around you. Does the room appear to move around you? So try that out. And then um, Nick, are you willing to demonstrate? Nick happens to be sitting in a chair with wheels. Okay, yeah. so Nick, you're gonna pretend to be earth. I sure am, okay. So I'm the earth, round head. It works, okay? And I'm going to imagine and observe what happens as I spin around. So again, be safe when you try this on your own. If you have a spinny chair, maybe that's a fun way to do it, but I'll try not to uh, stub my toe or something here. All right, let's spin. Three, okay. two, one. Everybody imagine, what is Nick seeing as he spins around? He's spinning around, looks like to his left. What is the room doing? Nick, did the room look like? Does it look like it's spinning around you? It does. Um, as, as I move around, it kind of looks like things are moving around too. Wow, um, so you spun to the left, it probably the room looked like it spun to the right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to say it. Okay, so in fact, we live on a spinning planet Earth. I know you can't feel it, but it is spinning pretty fast. And uh, that makes the sky appear to move or spin around us. And that is why during the day, you see the sun move across the sky. That's why the moon rises and sets. That's why the other stars other than the sun rise, move across the sky and set. Same for planets as well. So that the sky moves around us because of Earth's spin. Um, but I think we've got another question for you all. Um, you might have heard that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So we have a true or false question for you. True or false, the sun always rises exactly in the east and sets exactly in the west. Is that true or is that false? So does the sun rise due east, exactly east, every single day of the year? And does it set exactly in the west, due west, every day of the year? True or false? And uh, you might try to kind of look at the Stellarium screen and Get ready, because after you answer this poll question, we're going to ask you to make a prediction about where the sun will set tonight. And, and remember, this view you have in Stellarium right now is kind of like a real view if you were out looking at the sky. Maybe it could help you just a little bit if um, we give you a, a bit broader of a view of the sky here. You can kind of see um, here. This is even better. I know it looks like a big circle. Um, imagine the, the zenith or the top of the sky is kind of right here in the middle. But now you can see E for east, W for west. Maybe that can help your guess a little bit. Yeah. Oh, we have, we have disagreement on this one. So it looks like some of you thought, yeah, the sun, I've heard that, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Is it, is it exactly in the east, exactly in the west? And then some of you were more skeptical about that statement. Well, let's find out what happens tonight. So everybody make a prediction. If you think the sun always sets exactly in the West, find that red letter W on your screen 
Nick's gonna try to move things around a little bit, try to give you a good view. And uh, keep your eye on the sun. Now there might be a tree in the way, sometimes that happens in our sky gazing. But make a prediction right now. Will it set exactly at that W? Or will it set, will it disappear somewhere else? Now Nick is speeding up time. You'll see the sun moving and the moon looking like it's moving. And again, that's because we're on a spinning planet. Earth is spinning. Oh, what do you think, Nick? Where did it set? It looks to me like it's set right behind that big tree, which um, doesn't have a big red letter under it. It's kind of near the W, but I don't think I would say exactly um, in, in the direction of west. So in fact, the sun does not always rise exactly in the east and set exactly in the west. It does, by the way, on two days of the year, on the dates of the equinoxes. So the first day of spring and the first day of fall. It does rise exactly east and set exactly west. Any other time of the year though, it, set, it rises roughly in the east and sets roughly in the west, but not exactly. Uh, now that we're in summertime, it sets actually quite a bit north of west. So that can make things a little tricky. If you're trying to use the sky as a compass, the sun maybe doesn't help you out quite as much as you might have hoped for. Yeah, and You've I got think- got another yeah, method. Yeah, we have another method. The other piece of the puzzle is that you don't have these big red letters out in the real sky either. So even if you can trace the sunset point and make a good guess, it's a little easier to confirm here, but, but we have another way. Um, and that involves moving our sky a little bit, doesn't it, Amy? We have to um, yeah, so we're going to, are we going to try to swing the sky around? Yeah, so what's going to happen now, this whole time we've been facing south. Again, imagine you're looking up above you. Um, the top of the sky is right here, so I know it's a little different than our normal view. But what we're going to change is instead of facing south, we are going to swing around and face north. Um, in the real world, that means doing what we just did, spinning around. Um, in Stellarium, you can use the arrow keys, um, just your left or right arrow keys, to spin the sky. And we're going to get it so that we are facing towards the north. Okay, so the end is at the bottom of your screen. And we wanted to point out, you might be thinking, but maybe, maybe you have one of these at home. Maybe you've got a um, compass at home. Yeah, you can use this to tell direction, but you don't have to have a compass to tell direction. If you've got a clear night sky, you can actually just use the sky to tell directions. All right, um, so I'm thinking there's one star in particular that's really going to help us out. Yep, and a lot of you might have heard of it before, um, and there's a pretty good reason we turned around to face the north, um, because the star that helps me find my directions the best, and we hope can, can do the same for you, is called the North Star, or Polaris. So... I think we wanted y'all to try to look around on the screen a little bit yourself um, because Amy, I always hear that the North star is the brightest star in the sky. Yeah. I hear people say that a lot. Um, so let's, let's pop up another poll question and let's see what you all think. True or false. The North star is the brightest star in the night sky. Is that true or is that false? Boy, Nick, if it is the brightest star in the night sky, it's going to be pretty easy to find, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, for the brightest star, right? One of the tricky things is Stellarium labels the brightest stars, so that might influence your answer here a little bit. <laughs> and I have to say, boy, that would be really convenient if the North Star, the star that's over Earth's North Pole and that's always in the north, if that also happens to be the brightest star in the sky, that would be pretty amazing. Okay, and some of you thought, yeah, yeah, I've heard that. I think that's true. And then some of you thought, mm, no, I don't think so. Well, let's, let's test it out. Let's find out for ourselves. Okay, so Stellarium marks brighter stars with bigger dots. So let's look around for some big dots. And as Nick pointed out, Stellarium also labels the brightest stars. So the brightest, Nick, I, technically the brightest star that's in view right now for this latitude, uh, for where we are on the Earth, and for this time of night and time of year, it's Arcturus. So y'all see Arcturus? And uh, it's the first star that comes out tonight because it is the brightest star in the sky. So if it's clear tonight where you are, look for it. And um, it's kind of orangish, kind of has an orangish reddish 
look to it. But is that, what do you think, Nick? Is that in the north? You know, it can be kind of tricky in this view, um, but I wouldn't let it confuse you too, too much because the way that I find in Stellarium to, to think about what direction the star is going to appear is by drawing my shortest line to the horizon. So even though if you look way up here in the sky, it could look like it's in line, really Arcturus's shortest line to the horizon is not exactly in the north. And you know, if you download this program, you could play around with it for yourself to confirm that. Um, but I don't think it's quite in the north. Okay, not yeah. So Arcturus wouldn't be a very good North Star, it looks like. But what about Vega? Vega's almost as bright as Arcturus. That's a really bright star. It'll also grab your attention tonight if you're out right after it starts to get dark. It won't have that same orangish look to it. It'll look more, it'll look more like a white star. And Nick, that does not look like north to me. The the N is pretty far away, actually. Yeah, same deal. I think if you draw your line down here, you're in east northeast um, territory. So not exactly north. And I see some other bright stars. Um, near Vega. Uh, some of y'all, if y'all have watched our other programs or you know the sky already, you will um, see the stars that make up the summer triangle. So well, that one doesn't, it doesn't want to click on Deneb for me. There's a satellite in that direction, but yeah, star right here is called Deneb. <laughs> <laughs> so summer triangle stars. So those other two stars in the triangle are bright as well, but as you can see, they are not in the north. They are more towards the east or northeast at this, at this time of night, time of year. So Nick, I wonder, could you, could you kind of give us an idea sort of where, what area we're looking for if we're looking for a North Star? Yeah, um, and again, kind of tricky because of the shape we have on the screen, but the stars that are truly in the North are actually kind of in this region of the sky. Um, in this view, they look like they're a little bit lower towards the end, but remember the top of the sky is right here in the middle. Um, so this neighborhood over here, I would say these are the objects that are that are in the north. Um, and we do have a good way to, to point you to the North Star. Um, so, it, and we've talked about it before, but I think everybody can always use a reminder on how to do this because it involves finding one of the most prominent shapes in the nighttime sky, uh, the Big Dipper. And if you've ever gone out and find the, found the Big Dipper before, you know that even if you're in a city, a lot of times you can see all of the bright stars of the Big Dipper. It's not actually a constellation. It's part of a larger constellation. But to us, it looks like a big soup spoon that you would dip into a pot of soup. So on your screen, you'll be looking for seven bright stars, three stars in the handle and four stars in the bowl that make up a shape that looks like a big soup spoon. And I'll tell you, um, it looks like it's kind of vertical right now on our screen. So I can help you out by finding the three stars of the handle. One, two, three. And the four stars of the bowl. One, two, three, four. And with a little bit of imagination help, um, you can outline the shape of the Big Dipper. You notice that there are more than seven stars connected here. Um, the Dipper is just part of the larger constellation Ursa Major. So uh, in mythology, this was a great bear Again, I always struggle to see a bear with a big long tail because I've only ever seen bears with little stubby tails. Um, so if you, you know, think of this as the great squirrel in the sky or something like that, that's okay too. But um, the Big Dipper is part of the larger constellation Ursa Major. But for our star hopping and, and pointing today, we just want to use the Dipper part. And uh, we're actually going to use the two stars that I highlighted. Uh, they're, they're what we call the pointer stars. They're, they're opposite of the handle. So remember, three stars in the handle, four stars in the bowl. These two stars here are named Mirac and Duby. And to find Polaris, the North Star, kind of the star of our show today, um, you need to draw a line from Mirac to Duby and extend that line out into space to the next brightest star that you can find. So the way we do this is highly scientific. We say we go from Mirac to Doobie, and we go Doobie, 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 do, all the way to Polaris, or the North Star. And you notice that that brought up a label. Uh, it's part of a constellation called Ursa Minor, which we also know as the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. Wow, Nick, and I'm noticing that is definitely not the brightest star in the sky. And in fact, Polaris is number, 
49 on the list of bright stars. So um, the North Star, Polaris, is not famous for being bright. It's famous for being in the north. And as you can see, it's pretty much right over that red letter N. Um, it, it does the job. It's not exactly over Earth's North Pole, but it's really close to it. We just lucked out that there happens to be a sort of bright star um, over Earth's North Pole, over our planet's axis of rotation. So it's always going to be in the north. And um, we have another method we wanted to show you as well for finding the North Star. Are we ready for yeah. that? It, it would be unfortunate if your sky compass only worked for part of the year. So there are, um, there, there is another pattern of stars that we can use to point our way to the North Star. And you'll see why that's useful in just a moment. But what we're gonna look for now on our current screen, it's actually kind of low uh, between North and Northeast. Uh, it's a pattern called Cassiopeia. And I'm gonna illuminate this for you. It kind of looks like a W or an M, depending on which way you're looking at it. Right now it looks like a W. Uh, and it's supposed to be, um, in, in the stories, a, a beautiful queen sitting on her throne. I'm not sure how they got a queen out of that, but you know, um, I love using my imagination, so I, we can see it. What you do with Cassiopeia, though, uh, is actually pretty simple as well. So kind of like using Mirac and Doobie to point your way to the North Star, you can use the middle point of this W and act like it's a bow and arrow. That's what I always think. You can pull it back and I'm really bad at archery. So my arrow curves to Polaris. So that middle point, it's not an exact straight line, but it's pretty close to the next brightest star. And that's, that's an alternate way to find the North star. Okay. So now you have two ways, the big dipper, the pointer stars point to Polaris, the North star Cassiopeia points with some curving to Polaris, the North Star. And also, if you can just see the little dipper, you know that Polaris is, is the, Polaris is the name of the North Star and it's the tip of the handle. Um, and I think what we wanna do next is actually um, consider that the fact that the Earth is spinning. And we, we made this big deal earlier that the sky moves, not only over the day, but over the night. The Earth is spinning both day and night. So is Polaris really gonna stay in the North? as the night goes on. So everybody make a prediction right now about how you think the sky will change or maybe how it won't change as we pull an all-nighter. So what, what time are we at now? Can you we're, remind us? we're at about 11 p.m. and I started moving us forward, um, but I wanna turn it up one notch so you can maybe see the motion a little bit more. Okay, so Earth is spinning, spinning, spinning. And it looks like the sky is moving, things are, kind of moving from east to west, but it really looks like they're all moving around Polaris, which stays in the same spot. So this is why Polaris makes such a great North Star. It stays in the north the whole night and the whole day for that matter, and the whole year. So it doesn't matter what time of night or what time of year, Polaris uh, will be the North Star. And so how, how late do we stay up, Nick? This is almost 4.30 a.m., so way, way past my bedtime. Maybe if you're an early early riser, you're getting up at this time. Um, there are some cool sights to see in the sky if, if, you're, if you're getting up this early. But you now probably notice why we showed you two methods uh, for finding the North Star, because what happened to the Big Dipper here, Amy? You know, something that so often happens when I try to stargaze in North Carolina, something gets lost behind a tree. <laughs> so yeah. this is why you need to have two methods, because... When the Big Dipper is low to the horizon, close to the horizon, it's going to be harder to see, more likely to be lost in kind of sky glow, light pollution, or behind a building or behind a tree. If the Big Dipper is low, Cassiopeia will be high and probably you'll be able to see it, and vice versa. Remember that earlier in the evening, we had Cassiopeia really low and it probably would have been hard to find. Um, so the sky changes um, over the night uh, because of Earth's rotation. Yeah. and. I, I think this uh, really helps kind of show the point um, that our tilted axis, the axis of the Earth, is pointed right at this star. So as we spin, no matter where we are um, in, in our path around the sun or at any point in the day, that North Pole is, is pointed at the same place. And that can be really useful 
um, here in the northern hemisphere, we can use this as a direction finder, but um, unfortunately, there's, there's no equivalent south star, um, at least right now. Um, over really, really long periods of time, um, that can change, but we're talking tens of thousands of years. So I wouldn't count on it for your navigation tool right now. And, and Nick, I know we're running out of time and people are, are, uh, have been putting questions into the Q&A. Keep doing that. We'll try to get to as many as we can um, in another moment or, or two. But do, do you think we have time to sort of show how the sky changes over the year a little bit? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so um, another neat thing that Stellarium can do, we can, we can move not just forward in time by minutes and hours, we can move whole days or months at a time. Um, so I'm going to bring up a window here um, that should help us change the date and time. Um, you see that it, it's kind of like a bigger version that says now we're the 1st of July, that's early tomorrow morning um, in about 4.30 a.m. But what did we want to do? We want to move the months up, right? Yeah, maybe one month at a time, and but we'll we'll stay anchored at around four thirty daylight time. Okay, well, let's do it. So imagine you're standing outside facing the same direction, and time is just skipping one month at a time. This is what you would see at about four thirty a.m. Whoa! Here's August. Wow, even see Orion peeking up over here. Okay. Yeah. So the Big Dipper's still in a terrible location at four thirty. Oh, it's getting better. September. Cassiopeia, you can find that though. North Star, still there. All right. Notice they keep they keep pointing, right? Even though the sky is moving, the pointer stars from the Big Dipper still point to Polaris. Cassiopeia, you imagine that arrow still points to Polaris. Move through October and November, all the way to December, January, February. We we could keep going. <laughs> we could. <laughs> You can kind of get the idea how the sky not only provides you with a compass, it also provides you with a clock and a calendar. There's a lot you can tell about what's going on just by looking up. Yeah, and this kind of ties into um, a lesson we, we just had uh, uh, within the last couple of weeks about how you see different constellations at different times of the year. Um, it has to do with um, the way the earth is moving around the sun. Um, and, and where we are on the earth as we look. So um, it, it's kind of neat to, to, to tie this compass that the sky uh, provides for us with why we see different things at different times of the year. Okay, um, I, I think we've only got a couple of minutes, so I wanna make sure we can answer some questions, but we have a final poll question for you all. It's helpful to us if you can let us know, if you can all answer this question, let us know how many people are watching this program on your screen right now. If it's just you, put one. Um, we know that some of you watch with other people. If you can indicate how many people have been watching, that would help us out. Thank you very much. And um, Nick, I'm going to start looking at the, the q and A. I see some great questions. Yeah, I see some really good ones. I'll um, I'll uh, I'll I'll take one from from Andy that I saw just because this is something that I really love to do. Um, Andy asked, "What's the best camping place to stargaze?" This is totally subjective. Um, I will say that, but um, the really neat thing is if you get 20, 30 miles outside of a major city center here in North Carolina, you can get a fairly dark sky. Um, I will say the best skies that I've seen in North Carolina are definitely in the far eastern and far western parts of the state. So say Ocracoke Island on the Outer Banks, you're away from lots of city lights, you have a nice big clear horizon. I've seen the Milky Way there. I've seen all sorts of stars, so many stars that sometimes I lose track of what I'm looking at. Um, so the Outer Banks tend to be a really great place. And there is some uh, kind of state park camping you could do out there. On the other side of the coin, I love the western part of the state up near the Blue Ridge Parkway, things like that. Um, I know Pisgah National Forest has lots of really good camping spots and you can see a really, really cool clear sky up there. So it doesn't take a really long drive to get a darker sky, but um, I think it could be a fun part of planning your next camping trip for sure. Great. Well, thanks, Nick. That was great information. Um, I see a question here about what's more accurate, the North Star or a compass that uses magnetism? Um, so a compass tells you uh, magnetic north, which does not actually line up with geographic north. So actually, the North Star is a little bit of a better method. The compass, you're going to have to make a correction for. Um, and the North Star will get you within a degree of true north. Yeah, great question. Um, 
Nick, do you want to, I've, I've got one, I've got my eye on, I don't know if we have time. Yeah, um, so this is a good one to kind of clear up. Um, it, it's, does the sun even move in real life? Um, so we said a lot of times the sun doesn't actually move across the sky because the earth is spinning. But technically, the sun does move. The sun is a star, and it's being pulled around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So it, it's not correct to say the sun doesn't move at all. We just have to think about our frame of reference. So the sun does move in a really, really long path around the center of the galaxy. It takes way, way longer than you know, a human lifetime to track that. Um, but that is not the reason why we see it appear to move across the sky. So hopefully that makes sense that yes, technically it's moving, but still the reason we see the sun's position in the sky change throughout the day is because we are moving and rotating. Yeah, that's a great point. And the sun also wobbles a little bit because not only does the sun's gravity pull on the planets, the planets pull back on the sun. So the sun actually does a tiny little bit of a wobble too. Um, Nick, I know we're out of time, but I really want to get this one um, sure. from Hema. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Is the little dipper out the entire year? Um, yes. For, for our latitude, the little dipper is what's called a circumpolar pattern of stars. So anything that's near the North Star, you saw that the North Star stays in the same spot uh, all night long, all day long, all year long. Anything in that general area also is going to be in the sky. It might get a little higher, it might get a little lower, but it's going to be out all year long. So if you know how to find the Little Dipper, you're always going to be able to find the North Star. Now your mileage may vary a little bit um, depending on your latitude. If anybody's watching from way north of here or way south of here, the portion of your sky that's circumpolar will be different. But if you're in most of the United States, uh, it's a fairly similar sky, what we just showed you. Wow, those are some really great questions, y'all. We really appreciate it. That's, um, that's what makes these sessions happen for us. You know, your questions help mm -hmm. us to think of new topics. They help, help us to be better. Um, and we're just so happy to see them every week. So um, with that, we are out of time today. Uh, but we'd like to thank you for joining us uh, with Morehead at Home. If you liked this program, uh, feel free to check out our website, www.moreheadplanetarium.org. Uh, you can navigate to the Morehead at Home page from there. There are all sorts of resources. Uh, I especially would, would like to point you to uh, Morehead's content about hidden no more, hidden stories in science. Uh, I think it's uh, something that uh, we could all serve to learn a little bit about. Um, also, if you like this session and want to watch it again, we post these on YouTube. Um, so feel free to check us out on our social media channels, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, or YouTube. You can even find some virtual playlists there on YouTube um, with 360 Planetarium shows, recordings of these sessions, and much, much more. So um, we're, we're happy to provide a lot of content in this time. Uh, but we'll be back with you here on Thursday at 10 a.m. So we'll see you then. Bye, everybody. <laughs>